Today I'm going to wrap my garage beer refrigerator. I'm going to make it look like an old mobile gas pump. Uh, it's a vinyl wrap that I got online. So this is just a kind of an inexpensive basic refrigerator. It's just a Whirlpool stainless steel front. Uh, bottom refrigerator. Some stock of beer and soda. And uh, top freezer. The sides are uh, end top are just painted steel. It's kind of a uh, rough finish. The front is smooth, uh, stainless. The handles are incorporated into the face of it. This plastic material here, I'm not sure how the vinyl is going to lay down. Uh, we'll figure it out. You might have to just leave the vinyl out or I may try to cover it. But that is the basic design of the refrigerator. Over here we have the vinyl wrap. This is a uh, from RM Wraps, got it on the line. It's a pretty good high quality, it's a 3M product. There's a side-by-side -side shot uh, before and after. RM Wrap custom designs the print for your refrigerator. So I sent in all these uh, dimensions. I probably didn't need all these dimensions, but I sent as many as I could and he uh, set it up for me. So we're just cleaning up, laying the vinyl down, and we'll get ready to get this thing going. RM Wrap sent two tools, uh, basically this box cutter for cutting the vinyl and this uh, squeegee for laying the vinyl down and getting the air bubbles out. It's just a hard board with a uh, piece of felt wrapped around it. Uh, worked out real well, held up for the whole for the whole job. Then I got some miscellaneous trim tools, heat gun, alcohol wipes. Cleaning off the refridge, we'll push it out into the center of the garage and uh, get started on the wrap. Just using isopropyl alcohol, get any dust or oils or whatever off it, clean it up a little bit. So over here there's a film. Uh, when the refrigerator was new I had a hard time getting it all off. It seemed like they put the film on and then put the hardware on, but I got to get all that off so the vinyl lays down nicely. Okay, this is the first piece. It's the top of the freezer here. It's got the most design on it, so it's got to be perfectly aligned because everything else is going to build off of that. So this arch right here, if I went by the alignment marks that arm wraps put on there, the whole piece would be too high, and that arch would be above the freezer door, which would not be very good. So I'll come up with my own uh, reference um, points there to get this thing lined perfectly square. So on the top of the door here, I have these like little, I don't know what they are, vents, I believe. There's two like little grills cut into the uh, top. So I got to make sure, I don't know if it's for breathing or, you know, make sure some air gets in there. I don't know. A little bit of foam right there. So that I could probably cover. But those vent areas, I'll, I'll just use a knife and cut through. So see the arch, the curve there. The vinyl wrap's going to lay across the face perfectly but when I fold it over it's not going to fold over because of that front face arch or curve in the door so I'm not sure what I'm going to do there we'll see when I get there so this is overkill here being this first piece is so critical uh, I don't want to try to try to get it aligned and with one hand I got to take off the vinyl uh, back paper to get it to start sticking so I'm going to hang it from the uh, garage door opener here move the refrigerator into it a little bit to hold it and um, then I could use the adjustment on the straps to get it kind of exactly where I want I put these little magnets you can barely see them on the bottom there they're just little strip magnets as a reference to get this thing perfectly level and uh, at that point I can um, take off the center there's a center strip that comes off with backing paper to actually start uh, sticking this thing down Everything seems to be lined up really nice now, so I can go ahead and press the center there. That's a small three-quarter inch strip to hold it in place. I can remove my straps. I no longer need that holding it up there. And I can pull, start pulling the backing paper off. It kind of pulls off nicely, and then I'll get the squeegee and start laying the vinyl down moving the air bubbles out 30 degrees I think is what they call for so I'm holding roughly 30 degrees there are air bubbles but they do move right out 
right to the edge and it really lays down nice and clean so now I'm working on the other side left side pulling that back paper off and as I kind of pull it back a little bit squeegee it pull it back more fold it and then just keep squeegeeing and moving along okay here's the first challenge putting the vinyl around this door handle got very interesting so I have to pull the vinyl back I hate pulling this vinyl back they say you can do it but it stretches it I didn't have it squeegee down or anything but pulling it back I could clearly see I'm stretching it but there's a little step down you can see in those little illustration there I need to push the vinyl down so I kind of bridged it you know by just bringing it down and squeegeeing it so I really got to get it tucked into that corner um, and then pull it down uh, and that works out beautiful as you can see right there but uh, at first I had pulled it down and it kind of bridged itself over there so pulling it back up sucks because uh, it does stretch the vinyl but it laid back down okay and it folds in there real nice so I'm hanging the second piece also again this one's really the last piece with a pattern on it a design that's got to be lined up so these straps make it easy for me uh, just takes a second to strap it on and now I can uh, adjust the straps to line up referencing the top piece which I know is perfect and get that thing lined up so like I said there's a little three-quarter inch strip I'm peeling off right there that's just to stick it right in the center and uh, get that thing started so check my last alignments left and right make sure those patterns line up and uh, now I can pull off the back end paper and start squeegeeing just like I did the top and I remember I did have uh, quite a few bubbles here it was just a bigger piece to work with but I got them all out I did have to pull the vinyl up at one point and stretching it like I said sucks but it uh, it lays back down and uh, no issues so so cutting around these door handles will be the next challenge so another uh, area that needed attention still needs attention actually is these uh, the molding here it's part of the door the plastic on the door so here I cut around it I didn't like the way it was laying down and on the top piece is seemed to go a little bit better so it's over the top so I could add pieces or or cut around I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet there I could cut a relief there to actually make it look smoother but we'll see what happens so for the most part there's the face of it the top and the sides are just red vinyl no pattern no patina nothing so I wish it had a little little something in there a little rust or something to make it look a little better but uh, anyway we'll get started on that part now so there's nothing to line up here it's just uh, like I said it's just a red print with no decor or imprint or design in at all um, as a matter of fact I wish it uh, the size didn't cost so much um, but anyway so I'm not gonna hang this one you see that little strip I'm taking off again that's the starter strip that'll uh, help you start sticking this down so this doesn't even matter if it was up there crooked there's overlap on the bottom top and side so I'll just cut the excess so this one no reason to take too long so basically both sides and the top are, are now like this so the only other intricate parts would be wrapping it on the inside you know under the door once I have to open those doors to get, the, get it on the inside and around the hinge on the other side I think I'll just move along here now and uh, nothing special just pull the vinyl backing paper down and squeegee it in there and get this thing done
So this wasn't part of the design. The uh, for use as a motor uh, for use as a motor fuel only contains lead tetraethyl. Um, so you can find these on eBay for their porcelain signs. Um, I was bidding on a couple, but the price kept going up and up. They're thirty, forty dollars. So I got the stickers for five dollars. I got two of them, and then I bought the magnetic backing and just put the sticker on the magnetic backing. Um, I had used two of the magnetic backings, but I just got them close together, uh, taped it so they would stay there, put the sticker over the top, and then trimmed it all off with the knife. And uh, I tell you what, they have a rustic look to them. They look just as good as the, the uh, original units. And then it doesn't affect the vinyl, doesn't hurt the vinyl. Just stick them with the magnet right in there and kind of gives it a, a nice look to it.